Robinson, uh, of course, FA Youth Cup tie coming up on Wednesday night at Plough Lane. Burnley the visitors, and of course turning the clock back to a famous event back 46 years ago now. Uh, me. Wimbledon winning at uh, Turf Moor against the Giants of Burnley then in the FA Cup. And of course, we've still got Dickie Guiney and Cook around yeah, us yeah. now. No, fantastic. And I remember when we played Burnley, well, it must be four years, five years ago in the FA Youth Cup. And I remember you, the story then of that, you know, that, that great cup run the Wimbledon side had back then. And that was part of the build up to when we played Burnley then. So, um, yeah, no, um, Shane Cookie and Dickie can't be there because I know that they would want to be there. I used them as part of um, a pre match talk one year in the FA Youth Cup as well. I brought them both into the dressing room. So, yeah, no, fantastic. Long time ago, but great. Absolutely. It's real and as and it was good, but you're better. And if you want to go and be better against Chelsea and put out or up Man United, you you've got to. St it is real, son. And you are quality. <laughs> no, wait, listen. And you are quality. <laughs> that's come a little bit more up to date now of course when uh, you were under 18s coach now of yeah. course first team coach and let's start off with that that tremendous run that we had turning the clock back Watford Newcastle Chelsea take us through that your memories of that yeah um, even that feels a, a while back now yeah we had a, a couple of if I remember right non-league sides in the early rounds but you know good non-league sides they might have been Woking or, or Ebsleet and the lads built up confidence in that run they had a couple of good results against potential banana skin so very similar to what Rob's gone through this year um, and, and you could feel the confidence build and then we went to Watford and you know um, we were very adamant that we were going to impose our style on the opposition no matter what they were they were a confident bunch and you know We'd worked it, they'd been at the club for a certain amount of time, a lot of them. So, you know, we had the, we had the excellent result at Watford, which we should have won in normal time, as you know. We were the better side throughout. And then just took that confidence into Newcastle as well, where, you know, we could have been out of sight at half time, but, you know, it's often been talked about, but but no, they were they were great nights, and you know the fans really bought into it, and uh, it was excellent. We are the underdogs, and Wimbledon's always been known as the underdogs. Um, we're intending to punch above our weight, and we hope to give the people that have travelled all that way just to support us for the evening something to cheer about. There's no guarantees in football, but we know if we do our best, we've we've got a fighting chance, and that's what we intend to do. <laughs> But then, of course, getting Chelsea back at King's Meadow, some of the players that have gone on for Chelsea since then as well, that was a, that was a creditable night. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it certainly wasn't, you know, the scoreline flattered them. They even admitted that themselves at best it was a 2-1. Um, and you look at, yeah, I mean, Mason Mount, Tammy Abrahams, Tamori, Silva, and there's, there's others, you know, all playing football. But even if you go back to New Newcastle, Longstaff was playing for them that night. Obviously, Michael Felivi was playing for Watford. So, no, I mean, a lot of players playing at top-level football. And, you know, you look at our boys and think, you know, did we, did we get the best out of them? You know, some of the lads, um, should there have been a, a, a better pathway for them? And I think possibly yes. You know, when you think we only really got to Toby and Paul out of that group and then Ant the following year. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, we're working hard to change that now. So, um, yeah, no, lots of players going on, went on to play, you know, playing at high level international for England, etc. Yeah, so, you know, the boys, we were very disappointed after the Chelsea game because we felt we had them rocking. Uh, uh, you know, half time probably come too soon for us, and you know, you always reflect back on those nights as a coach. And there was a couple of things I could have done better. Um, Will Manuel was obviously a big loss for us before the game, and that's no disrespect to Jack, but you know, Will had just got in the England set up, and the way we wanted to play that night against Chelsea was to play in there, you know, defensive third as much as possible. And Will had a fantastic kick on him, and we knew we could win second balls on that night. So, a bit of our game plan went out the window, and a couple of the lads you know um, could have flagged up 
sort of tiredness a little bit early. So it's always little small margins, but no, they certainly did themselves credit. Rightly so, people focus on that run in particular, but we've got to remember other great results we've had as well against the likes of Huddersfield and Hull. Yeah, the following year, um, I think that run was really underrated, to be honest, especially the Huddersfield game where you know we, we travelled up on the day. I think it, we ended up being like a one or a two o'clock kickoff, and we didn't stay over because of budgets etc so we, we left at sort of half seven in the morning to get up there for the game and went there and won and won well again you know against a, a good side And you know, then we played Hull at home, and and I think possibly the whole game, you know, I don't think the boys got enough credit for that performance. I mean, it, it was three 0 it could have been seven, and you know, everyone was said all oh, they thought Hull would have been better, but they would beat Leeds in the previous round, who who had a you know, have got a fantastic academy, and they so they beat Leeds in the previous round. So I just think we were excellent on that night, and I thought the performance, you know, looking back on it, was probably the best best that we, we've put in, apart from, I, I can't say too much, but I watched our under-15s play Chelsea the other day and that's possibly the best academy performance I've seen, they were fantastic. Great stuff. <laughs> Even turning the clock back even further to that as well, I mean, at the, the time that we went to Fakenham Town, yeah, and we had a squad then, the likes of, you've got Ryan Sweeney, who's gone on to have a league career, of course, with yeah. Mansfield, Egley, who went on to Northampton, yeah. uh, Dan Adji, of course, at Oxford yeah. United as well, so it, it does help forge your career for them, doesn't it? 100%, and, you know, our FA Youth Cup success has been good, and that year was, to be honest, we... I thought that was going to be the year that kick-started the FA Youth Cup because I think we beat Fakenham and then we went on and beat Gillingham and um, and we had Bur that was when we had Burnley at home and I could see us having a run that year. We had a really, really good side. Unfortunately, we lost Danny Gallagher in the Gillingham game and then Ben Harrison had just broke into the first-team squad so we didn't have him that night and they were two big losses for us um, that night. And we started slow and I think we ended up, we ended up losing 2-1 and we, we were dominant the second half. But, you know, then again, that could have been another big year for us because, you know, if we'd, we'd beaten Burnley, I think they beat Cardiff in the next round, so we would have had Cardiff and I would have been very confident we would have beaten them. So again, that could have been at least minimum another last 16 that year. So, um, you know, and Rob's, Rob's got the boys going again, so hopefully it's going to, you know, we're going to continue this year. Well, absolutely. I was going to say, of course, you've now handed over the reins to Rob Toovey and, of course, your, your assistant as well in the past, James Oliver Pearce. Yeah. And in very capable hands for this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they've had a couple of little chats with me, but I think it's so important to leave them to it. They know I'm there if they want to run anything by me, but, um, you know, it's part of their development as well. You know, we had a review after their last game, you know, which I went and watched the against Sudbury so we had a good review after that game with Michael the academy manager to talk through the game you know which is everything that we you know part of the process win lose or draw you know games like that we always have a reflection process on what could have done better what could have been better in terms of the coaches and how the players performed so you know they know they're there if they ever want to run anything by me but it's so important that they take the mantle and you know they bring their ideas to to what they want to do within our framework that we've always had as an academy and um, yeah, I'm sure they do us proud. Yes of course and of course as well I mean it's the, the chance to play at Plough Lane. 100% and, and you could see after the, um, the supper game the boys were so excited um, you know because Mike and I were a little bit on why they celebrating quite so much about beating Sudbury but I think it was more the fact that they knew and that's no disrespect to Sudbury by the way but I think it was more the fact they knew they were going to play at Plough Lane because they'd gone on the tour the week before 
and yeah, they're going to be so excited. And on these nights, a lot of that, a lot of it, Rob, is how you deal with that. You know, I know games when we were at Kings Meadow. You know, the boys used to get excited then, especially because we used to get such great crowds. And a big part of it is, you know, we know these lads have got ability, but it's how they deal with it mentally and how they perform on the night. And you know, that's what I'll be watching with interest. We, our program at the academy is very much about producing self-managing athletes who can cope under pressure, they don't revert to type. You know, you hear a lot of managers talking about reverting to type. And, you know, we always look, well, what does, what does type mean? And type means really the education that we're giving them. So, you know, the better education that we give them, then they shouldn't revert to type. They should thrive on these occasions. So, you know, that's what I'll be watching interestingly. It's, you've got the plough lane, you've got the fact it's Burnley, and we're going to expect them to go out and, and perform and win. So, you know, it would be great to watch. It is going to be a fantastic experience, but of course the, the one thing that's really going to be missing is the fans, isn't it, and their families. Yeah, yeah and, that, and, that, and that's, you know, I feel so sorry for Rob and James and the lads on that because, you know, our fans have always bought into, you know, what the academy does and these FA Youth Cup nights have been huge. I mean, the Chelsea night was incredible, but you kind of almost expect that, but the Newcastle night was just, you know, the amount of fans we took up to Newcastle on a Wednesday night was just you beg a belief really so you know you know if fans were allowed in I'm sure we would have had two three four thousand there but you know it is what it is um, you know the boys would just have to keep going and you never know um, fans might be allowed in if they get to the final or something. and your mind does go back to the likes of Alfie Egan back at Watford and Newcastle and just just not being intimidated by who the opposition are it's about who we are isn't it hundred percent and and that's again that's what we'll be looking for I mean, to be honest, you'd have been gutted if we'd gone out of that game 2-1 yeah, tonight because definitely. we thoroughly bossed it, to be honest, didn't we? 100%. I thought from start to finish we was the better team. Like, we went into the game believing that we was the better team. Like, it doesn't matter if they're in the Premier League, it doesn't matter if they're in Cap 2. Like, we're Wimbledon, we believed that we was going to come in and get a result out of it. You know, and, and people often say to me about that, Alfie, when he talked after the game at Watford and said, we don't care. And, you know, th th those words weren't... You know, those words were lived every day. They're not things that we said, oh, we, you know, if we beat, we want you to make some speech to make. You know, that, that's how they felt. And that's how we bring them up to believe that anything's possible, that you can achieve anything against the odds. And, um, and that's how we bring them up to believe. And that's what, you know, that's the biggest thing that we're always looking for. And we're moving on as a, an academy all the time. And, you know, you look at, I look at, I, went, I still go and watch the younger age groups and you see, you know, before when we played, these category one sides, your Chelsea's, etc. You know, we're putting good performance and we work hard and all the things you expect, but now I'm going to watch them and it's, it's more than that. You know, the, the work rate's there, the endeavour's there, but the quality's there as well. As I said, I can't talk too much about the under 15 Chelsea game, but the quality <laughs> absolutely blew me away. It's like any competition, though, isn't it? Like the FA Cup itself. I mean, yes, they've got the greater resources in terms of an academy, perhaps, but it's a level playing field at the end of the day and it's, it's going to be so much to these boys playing at Plough Lane. Yeah, it's all about the people, Rob, at the end of the day. You know, your facilities and yeah, of course you want you want a pitch, a nice pitch you can train on. But the rest to me just brings about comfort. And I think being in your comfort zone is the last place you need to be, especially the way things are now. I think you know we we need to make players feel uncomfortable in, in a good way, um, give them the right amount of feeling uncomfortable, give them the right challenge point. You know, um, I don't think facilities play any part particularly in development. You need to have certain things, of course you do, but um, I, I don't think it's a hindrance to us. There's, there's certain things we'd like better in terms of pitches, there's no doubt about that, but the rest for me just, just puts people in their comfort zone. I don't think that's a good place to be. Of course, it's a team thing as well, but I mean, our boys are going to be motivated by perhaps the fact of being the first uh, scorer at uh, Plough Lane for the, for the youth team. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they're thinking about that, but I think, you know, Rob, De Rob and James are definitely be talking about processes and, and, and keeping keeping anything like that away from them really and just what will be will be on the night you know someone's going to score um, and you know they'll be talking more about the processes they need to win the game the mental state they need to be in to win the game but of course when it happens and I'm sure it will happen it's going to be a great moment for someone. Absolutely wise words as ever Robbo thanks for your time. Cheers Rob thank you.